almost 200 tons. This is the weight of the heaviest tank in the world. Although it's called Panzer 8 Mouse and only two copies were built and none of them participated in the combat operations. For comparison, Leopard and Challenger tanks weighed up to 63 tons, which makes them sturdy and comfortable at the battlefield. Welcome to War is Algebra, and I'm your host, Daniel Salem. Watch this. During warfare, the success of many operations depends on the serviceability of armored vehicles and their timely maintenance. In this issue, we will show you how tanks and armored vehicles are repaired at the front line and tell you what surprises are hidden under the hood of military equipment. Now we are at the point of receiving damaged vehicles at the site of armored vehicles repair. Repairing military equipment in a battlefield looks like hangar. Lots of tanks, engines, tools, and a lot of guys doing their own thing. This vehicle doesn't need to be repaired. It is called Brem Armored Repair and Recovery Vehicle, used for evacuation of damaged armored vehicles from the battlefield. Armored Repair and Recovery Vehicles ARVs play an important role on the front line. Providing infrastructure, ARVs were designed to evacuate damaged infantry fighting vehicles. Take Athlete ARV for example. There are three compartments in the armored personnel carrier, landing, engine and transmission. And there are two winches, main and secondary. Specifications, length, 8.89 meters, width, 3.56 meters, height, 2.74 meters, clearance, 515 millimeters, weight, 46 tons, engine, 60 D2, engine power, 1,200 horsepower, maximum speed, 65 kilometers per hour, winch tractive power, 250 kilonewtons main and 9 kilonewtons secondary, load capacity, 25 tons, crane lifting capacity, 15 tons. We use this vehicle to evacuate damaged tanks to bring them here for repair. As the military said, an armored recovery vehicle is something that is always in short supply at the front. The Ukrainian military is armed with armored repair and recovery vehicles provided by Western partners and domestically produced ones left over from old stocks. They also have trophy vehicles left by the Russians on the battlefield. This ARV is based on the T-65 tank, which is an outdated model that is not used in combat operations. But it is used quite effectively here. So, here's for example, some of the military vehicles it evacuated. This is a T-72 tank. It needed an engine replacement, dynamic protection welding and inspection of all weapon systems. The work is almost complete. We are currently accepting the machine and checking all systems. The next vehicle had damaged electrical wiring. As a result, the engine had to be dismantled. Repair work is currently underway to restore the electrical equipment. This is another T-72 tank. It has a combination of damages. The onboard transmission failed. Here it is. The engine also failed. Here, the soldiers mostly carry out aggregate repairs. There is neither time nor equipment for major repairs. That is, when the vehicle arrives, we change the engine, or the onboard gear, or the track, and it goes into battle right away. Each vehicle has damage of varying severity on the battlefield. The military evaluate the effectiveness of fire. But here the guys compare the functionality of the equipment from the inside. A favorite topic for discussion during repairs is T-60 for NT-7 to tanks. Masters like to say that the T-72 tank is more tender. It breaks down more often. That is, it has its own nuances in the lubrication system, its own nuances in the engine operation. The T-64 tank is more reliable and easier to repair. It is easier to dismantle the engine. This tank is more maintainable. Repair work is carried out around the clock, in two shifts. There is no time for rest. As you can see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 onboard gears are out of order. We have collected them, made one out of two or three, and hope that this our know-how will work well and we will be happy. Vladislav is also happy to see the machinery working properly. He is the head of the repair shop. Since the beginning of the full-scale war in the center of Europe, Vladislav has returned more than a dozen tanks to service. 
At the beginning, electrics were something unbelievable to us in particular. I remember the first time I saw a tank, I was simply shocked. You get in, you see at once. You have optics here, optics there, buttons, and everything like that. In the same time, I was still thinking in my head that this thing kills, that there are shells somewhere inside. But time overcomes fear, and with experience comes new skills. Over time, when you start to understand how this car works, you become interested. You want to develop in this direction, and move on and achieve new goals. You have to understand the car, love it and maintain it. That's the key to success. Vladislav divides the causes of machinery malfunctions into three categories, electrical, mechanical, and human factor. The most difficult category is electrical. You look, you see some kind of malfunction. If I have encountered it before, I do what I have already done. If my actions do not help, then metrologists come to the rescue. Metrologists are specialists who check and regulate the accuracy of measuring devices. They are just gods. You call them right away. They can be out somewhere with their crew at that time. They don't even see the car, but they're already so knowledgeable that they have an idea of what might have happened and tell you what else to look at. Vladislav and his colleagues are used to working a lot, not only in the workshop but also in the battlefield. Sometimes we leave the workshop to repair equipment. Yesterday, for example, we were out, changing the tank's sight range finder, an AT-60 4K tank. We took the scope off. It was like this, a man is inside the gunner's seat. We hook the sight with two straps and with the help of other people by these straps we pull it out through the hatch. Then we installed a new working sight. For some reason we had to readjust the K1 for the new sight. A crew of four people completed this work in five hours. We went out, set up, the crews did the reconciliation. That is, we adjusted the connection between the muzzle and the sight, and everything, as they say, fell into place. For such tasks, Vladislav and his team have their own mobile tank repair workshop 80, based on the ZL-131 truck. Specifications Dimensions 7,470-5,783,100 mm, weight, 15.5 tons, internal dimensions of the vehicle body, 4,000-1,251,800 mm, internal vehicle body volume, 15 to 5, engine power, 140-120.6 horsepower, crane lifting capacity, 1.5 tons, hook lifting height, 2,400 mm, the ZIL is equipped with a boob crane, which is used to remove the engine and final drive, and to carry out dismantling, welding, and mechanical work. We drive a ZIL. Everything is there, our workshop, all the necessary tools. All this we have and take with us. We have different fluids, starting with hydraulic oils, and on down the list. The tank repair shop performs its functions both in the field and in the workshop, however, while a malfunction in the field can be fixed in a matter of hours, more serious problems can take weeks to fix in the workshop, while in civilian life. It could take three to four days. You always need a spare part that you don't have. Usually, if something bad can happen, it happens. That is, some part is not available, and we have to wait for a long period of time. Even while waiting for spare parts, the military are not idle and are trying to modernize their equipment on their own. The war is changing and our enemy has a large number of drones. That's why we started to think more about protection against them, the so-called anti-lancet protection. That is, we weld the structure. You can see it on this tank. But the work is not yet complete. There is no roof or engine compartment protection yet. Believe me, what we were doing before was nothing compared to what we are doing now. Every day there is something new. Every day we try to get to grips with something new. We are in a difficult environment, because we are not at some factory or workshop. We don't have proper lifting equipment, we don't have proper electrical equipment, so we work like this. But we still try to carry out repairs efficiently and quickly. Watch this!
As you can see, the age is not an obstacle. A 30 or 40 year old technology, inexperienced and reliable hands can easily complete the mission and restrain the aggressor from your territory. My name is Daniel Salem and you're watching War is Algebra. Stay tuned.